Bore Out There by Cynthia Rowland. Everyone in Glen Morgan knew there was a wild boar in the woods over by the Miller Farm. The boar was out beyond the splintery rail fence and past the old black dodge that somehow ended up in the woods and was missing most of its parts. Jenny would hook her chin over the top rail of the fence, twirl a long green blade of grass in her teeth and whisper, Bore out there. And there were times she was sure she heard him. She imagined him running heavily through the trees, ignoring the sharp thorns and briars that raked his back and sprang away trembling. She thought he might have a golden horn on his terrible head. The boar would have run deep into the woods, then rise up on his rear hooves, throw his head towards the stars and cry a long, clear, short note into the air. The note would glide through the night and spear the heart of the moon. The boar had no fear of the moon, Jenny knew, as she lay in her bed, listening. One hot summer day, she went to find the boar. No one in Glen Morgan had ever gone past the old black dodge and beyond, as far as she knew. But the boar was there, somewhere, between those awful trees, and his dark green eyes waited for someone. Jenny felt it was she. Moving slowly over damp brown leaves, Jenny could sense her ears tingle and fan out as she listened for thick breathing from the trees. She stopped to pick a tea berry leaf to chew, stood a moment, then went on. Deep in the woods, she kept her eyes to the sky. She needed to be reminded that there was a world above her and apart from the trees, a world of space and air, air that didn't linger all about her, didn't press deep into her skin as the forest did. Finally, leaning against a tree to rest, she heard him for the first time. She forgot to breathe, standing there listening to the stamping of hooves and she choked and coughed, coughed. And now the pounding was horrible, too loud and confusing for Jenny. Horrible. She stood stiff with wet eyes and knew she could always pray, but for some reason she didn't. He came through the trees so fast that she had no time to scream or run, and he was there before her. His large gray black body shivered as she waited just beyond the shadow of the tree she held for support. His nostril glistened and his eyes, but astonishingly, he was silent. He shivered and glistened and was absolutely silent. Jenny matched his silence and her body was rigid, but not her eyes. They traveled along his scarred bristling back to his thick hind legs, tears spilling and flooding her face. Jenny stared at the boar's ragged ears, caked with blood, her tears dripping to the leaves, and the only sound between them was his slow breathing. Then the boar snorted and jerked, but Jenny didn't move. High in a tree, a bluebird yelled, and suddenly it was over. Jenny stood like a rock as the boar wildly flung his head in terror, bolted past her, past her. And now, since that summer, Jenny still hooks her chin over the old rail fence, and she still whispers, Boar out there, but 
when she leans on a fence looking into the trees, her eyes are full and she leaves wet patches on the splintery wood. She is sorry for the torn ears of the boar and sorry that he has no golden horn, but mostly she is sorry that he lives in fear of the blue jays and little girls when everyone in Glen Morgan lives in fear of him.